<laughs> Welcome to the Yoohoo Pod, where we talk all things picture books. My name is Meliza, and today I'm with Roxanne Trout, who wrote My Grandpa, My Tree, and Me. How are you, Roxanne? Doing really well. I'm glad to have you here. So My Grandpa, My Tree, and Me comes out in hardcover on April 13th, 2023. So it's not um, too far off. Have you received your copies yet from you? I have. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're so beautiful. And I love how there's alternate uh, artwork under the dust jacket. Uh, and the illustrations are just great. And the story is, is beautiful. I love the relationship between the, grand, um, the grandfather and the granddaughter. So um, do you mind giving me a quick summary of the book and what inspired you to write it? Sure. Um, My Grandpa, My Tree and Me is a lyrical look at the life and harvest cycle of pecans, but it's told through the relational lens, like you mentioned, of a grandfather and child. And um, my the first spark of inspiration, I think inspiration comes from a lot of places, but the first spark happened for me when I saw a video of a farmer harvesting pecans in his orchard. When he shook the tree and the pecans just fell like, like rain, I was fascinated and I knew that kids would love that. Yeah, well, you know, I have to say when, I'm not typically a, a big fan of, or I'm not, I was never really interested in going to see an orchard or like thinking of like, of harvesting pecans and things like that but it did make me curious after reading your book because you just you've laid it out so beautifully and I can I can just picture um everything that was happening the process of of just that lifestyle um you you definitely just like painted a painted a, a picture like a beautiful um like realistic picture like for me it was it was an experience reading it so uh yeah so I'm sure it'll definitely uh resonate with with children and so diving into the writing style I noticed it's written in first person which I do think it really creates you know more interest intimacy between readers and the the character the mm -hmm. character um, so what made you write in a first person point of view? Well, the first draft of my story was actually in third person mm -hmm. and it just wasn't working. Like you said, there was not, I mean, the information was all there, but it was missing the story. It was missing the heart. It wasn't really anything to invite a reader in or yeah. to ask someone to read it over and over and over again, you know? Um, and so I tried it in first person. And when I did that, everything just sort of came into focus. Suddenly the story wasn't so much about pecan farming as it was about family. Yeah. And that was really, I think, um, what gave it its heart. Yeah, and I, I definitely see that because it adds so much more value to why, you know, the, the, tr the, the pecan tree is so important to to the grandchild and and seeing it grow and and what they are working towards as you know grandfather and granddaughter it makes it more personable and more meaningful to to have that in first person yeah yeah but but because of of it being re written in first person i noticed the grandfather and granddaughter don't have names mm -hmm. and i am curious you know what did you choose to omit them like omit them um for a particular reason or is it just more to focus on the orchard and just a c connection to nature yeah they don't have names I, at one point mm -hmm. i thought about calling the grandfather big daddy which would mm -hmm. be after my own grandpa but yeah. i thought that name might be a little too regional to connect mm -hmm. with a lot of picture book readers so i kept it more of the generic grandpa um, yeah. and since the story is told in first person and there's not really any dialogue between the two characters there wasn't really a natural way to highlight the grandchild's name yeah um, so actually in the text I never even mentioned if it's a boy or a girl that's a decision that the illustrator made and I I think oh. she just did a great job yeah I didn't I didn't know that so thanks for that information I I thought you just 
you know, when you meet with it, with an illustrator and discuss how the book is going to turn out, that you just, you knew that you wanted the grandchild to be a, a girl. So no, in my mind, it was actually a boy because, I mean, I have boys. And so that's just what I mm -hmm. automatically thought. But I think that it works just beautifully. Yeah. And it does remind me of my of my late grandfather, just just thinking about um, just having that close relationship uh, between grand um, grandfather and granddaughter. So it, it, it's a good it's a great read. <laughs> you know, so I've reread it several times and maybe I, I do think maybe I'm thinking about it a little deeply at times, but you know, there, I mean, there's a beautiful cycle from the pecan tree, you know, and then the procuring harvest of the, of the pecans, like, it, and I feel like it can mirror a, a life cycle. It's just parallel to the lives of maybe the granddaughter and grandfather, like the granddaughter growing up and then maybe the grandfather, you know, you know, towards his being towards his older years, like, is that something that um is there a connection to that like something that grows and ages over time in in the orchard and then um just the characters aging and, and growing um you know i did want to i did want to showcase the growth and harvest cycle of pecans and for that to mirror the kind of cyclical nature of family mm -hmm. um, that's why i chose to write the ending as i did mm -hmm. um i wanted kids to know that you know, no matter how our families change, the love that we have for one another doesn't run out. It just grows. And, um, you know, just like in an orchard, there's always room for one more member of the family. Mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know that I, I don't know that I purposely mirrored the lives of the grandfather and grandchild, but I can certainly see that, that relationship and that correlation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that, that's a great way to put it too. Um, so I guess I wasn't thinking about it too deeply because I was touching. I was touching on some things that um, you intentionally had thought to to put in to put in the book, but I I really think you write in such a like such an atmospheric way that just lays out that life so beautifully with a strong connection to nature, like from digging into the soil and just the crunch of the leaves and uh, just you know, the harvest of the, the pecans, like, are there, are these instances inspired by your childhood in, in Missouri? Well, thank you. I, I really did work hard on the language of this book. Mm -hmm. I wanted each season to come alive to the reader without bogging down the story and making it feel heavy handed. Yeah. Um, and while some of that probably was influenced by my experiences in the fields of Missouri, I think that Kendra, the illustrator really pulled everything together. Her art just transports the reader into the wild and not so wild places of the outdoors. She just did a great job. Yeah, she did. Like her paintings remind me, I mean, not her paintings, her illustrations remind me of of, of Monet. <laughs> and yeah. when I was looking through that, I was like, these look fam like familiar to me or, or they remind me of somebody I, I know. And so when you got them, I, I know you thought that the, or you envisioned the granddaughter to to be a, a boy, but what did you think of the illustrations? How how do you feel, you know, seeing your work brought to life? You know, this is my first fully illustrated title. All of my mm -hmm. other books were photo illustrated nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So I really wasn't sure what to expect. But yeah, Kendra just did a fantastic job. I love watercolor and her painterly style was just perfect for the story. I think it adds so much softness and heart, especially the way that she depicted the relationship between the grandfather and the grandchild. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely thrilled with the final product. I didn't miss that it wasn't a boy at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's so fitting to me. Like I, it, it matched your, her illustrations complimented your writing style so well that it, it feels like like step like I feel like when re when I read this book it's like stepping into like a warm hug like just you know like coming home to like your family like that you haven't seen in a while that you know you grew up with so it was it's just such a nostalgic 
kind of like I mean I wouldn't say nostalgic because I didn't grow up you know in in a in a farm or or have ever experienced this lifestyle but it does feel it just feels warm and and loving all together and yeah so we, we've talked so much about the the strong relationship between the grandfather and granddaughter so do you hope this book will bring um grandparents and their grandchildren closer together like what is the lasting impression that you hope to leave with your readers i do you know my big daddy died when i was very young and I didn't have a great relationship with my other grandfather, but the stories that my brother and sister told of, of Big Daddy always made me long for that kind of relationship. Um, so I really hope that families enjoy reading the book together, that they take advantage of the time that they're given. Yeah. And I hope kids are fascinated with the process of how our food goes from the field to the table mm -hmm. and all the families that make that happen. But mostly I think, I hope that um, every child walks away from the book with the knowledge that they're loved and cared for, just like, you know, this grandchild, even if it's not by their own grandfather, that there's somebody in their life that um, some caregiver, whether it's family, friends, parents, there's somebody that loves and cares for them just like this grandfather does. Yeah, and um, I, I think that's a, a great way to 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 wrap things up and just to um you know to let children know that you know family doesn't always have to be by blood you know so yeah. um and that there could be like a, a strong bond um just between people and um and love from from taking care of one another and uh and I think it's just very, very, very heartfelt. So, so thank you. Um, do you mind sharing uh, your upcoming projects? Um, sure. I've got another, it's not um, officially announced yet, so I, I can't say a lot about it, but I have yeah. another informational fiction picture book coming out mm -hmm. hopefully next year, um, all about space. And um, I'm working on a couple others that hope to find homes in the next few months, but so you primarily work in non writing nonfiction? That's what I've done in the past. Um, but I actually have lots of fiction stories as well. Oh. <laughs> I just haven't found homes for all of them yet. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully they find homes soon. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> so we can see them hit the shelves. Um, yeah, so if your readers want to connect with you online, where can they find you? My website's probably the easiest place, mm -hmm. roxantrop.com. Um, there they can find links to all my social media profiles and even a calendar of upcoming events where we might be able to connect in real time. Yeah. So um, that wraps us up. Thank you so much, Roxanne, for uh, stopping by at the Yahoo Pod and having a conversation with me. You've shared so much and uh, just given me such beautiful insight to your book that I really think will just give readers a deeper connection to, to your work once they read it and congratulations to you it must feel amazing just to see your like your your first picture book right um to have a final copy and i can't wait for you to to see it on the on the shelves of a bookstore so oh, thanks so much it was great talking to you yeah so um to our listeners um uh, the My Grandpa, My Tree, and Me comes out on April 13th in hardcover. Make sure to grab your copy and thank you for tuning in. Bye.